Prusha has released a new firmware for the Mini. Let's check it out. Welcome to my new video of the Prusha Mini series. I'm approaching the 1000 subscribers mark and I'm really proud of that. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe if you like what you see and also you can ring the bell to uh, allow notifications uh, and see what's coming up next. I decided to make this video because I like the Prusa Mini a lot and uh, there is a new firmware out there which promises a few new features. So the, thi the first things you need to know to do this firmware upgrade is that it's a very smooth procedure. So the only thing you have to do is just go to the website of Prusa or you can also find the link in the description, download the new firmware and you're off to go basically. You just copy this on an USB stick and the process is going to be guided. I'm going also to go through it in a minute. The main updates that have been promised by Prusa are, are a few, but the ones that uh, are most important to me, one is the USB disconnect. So they have created a, a routine that if you accidentally disconnect or if you lose connection your, from your USB stick, the Prusa uh, stops and uh, pauses until you uh, put the uh, USB stick back on. That's not a guaranteed process because uh, it depends uh, what was the last uh, G code instruction th that has been read by the machine. But still, it's a good uh, safety net in case you mess up. The second one is they have updated their uh, up upload and uh, unload filament processes, which promise also to be uh, better in terms of if you have to stop and do a color change manually on the machine with an M600 uh, instruction. This is quite interesting because they say that this is going to hose less and create less uh, uh, mess from the nozzle, so that will help um, that will help users to do the color change during the uh, during the pause. Having said that, let's put our hands on the machine and let's see uh, how this uh, whole process goes. So we first do a baseline on the existing uh, firmware. In my printer, I have the 4.0.5. And uh, I'm starting with a USB disconnect test. So the new firmware promises to have um, a better way to handle USB disconnect. Um, it's probably not a very likely scenario, but still uh, nice to have. So what I'm trying to do is that I'm going to start the print. And it's a bench in this case, but I have no filament loaded in the printer, so it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to pull out the USB stick and see what happens. Now the printer now is uh, heating up. Um, both the nozzle and the heat bed and as soon as it's done uh, it will start first with the usual uh, bed leveling sequence and then uh, with the print itself. And now the printer starts with the print sequence and uh, yeah I will leave uh, I will leave it to work for a small or for a short while and then uh, next now I'm going to plug out the USB stick. As supposed the machine goes into a stop so it actually pauses and parks the head towards the back uh, right hand side corner uh, waiting for new inputs. So I'm putting the USB stick back on and then I'm hitting the resume button. So there's something fishy going on because uh, nothing happens. So I have waited for a while for the print to come back into action. It just uh, goes back to the last uh, uh, print spot and then uh, just stops there frozen. Nothing happens, you cannot move the click wheel, and in the end I had to hit the reset button to get it uh, started again. Now we go for the installation of the new firmware, so you just uh, plug in a USB stick with the loaded uh, firmware into it, and then you just uh, fire it up, and uh, the, the printer automatically detects the new firmware available and allows you to flash it. That's simple as that, so nothing really more to do than just uh, waiting for a couple of uh, minutes, then you can go and have some gummy bears or uh, a coffee or anything, and uh, it actually comes back on track pretty fast. The complete process takes less than a minute, and then uh, I just went into settings because turns out that the noise that the Hooter is making is uh, quite loud for me, so uh, there's a few different uh, options. Uh, I'm going for silent because I actually don't need the beeping. And that annoys me a bit. 
And now I'm going for the USB disconnect test. Uh, so ghost printing a Benchy again. And uh, let's see what happens now. The first difference we see is that uh, regardless of the print setting, the machine will eat 170 degrees. And then it will wait for both the nozzle and the print bed to do the bed leveling sequence. Once the bed leveling sequence is done, uh, then uh, I'm just going to decrease the nozzle temperature because it doesn't really matter since I have no filament. And I'm going to do the same exact same thing I did uh, previously. Uh, I noticed uh, happily that the live adjust has been saved, so I still have the same setting for the live adjust that I used to have before the, um, the firmware upgrade. Then I let the printer run for a couple of rounds and then uh, here I pull the plug. As expected, the printhead parks on the bottom right corner and then it's uh, in a pause. Putting the USB stick back in, then I have the resume button now allowed. I click resume and the machine goes back to the previous position and lo and behold, ta-da, it goes back into printing. So that's, I would call this a success. So kudos to uh, Prusa for having this run at the first go. So the new firmware also brings a welcome change to the loading and unloading uh, menu or actually sequence. So I'm going to do a load test and here I also get a chance to prove and test my uh, uh, mod which I really like that allows you to see what is happening to the extruder gear. So you see here that the machine is uh, actually allowing you to load the filament into the extruder assembly uh, while the temperature is going up. So nothing happens until the temperature reaches the set point and then, only then, when you already have your filament inside the extruder block, it just uh, pushes it all the way up into the Bowden tube and into the, the hot end itself. I think this is uh, a nice uh, change because now you don't have to wait uh, for the, you know, looking at the printer for it, for it to eat up. You just uh, go minding your own business and you can load it uh, just right away. The other nice thing is now, now you also have a retry option that you can select from the click wheel. I also decided to test the unload sequence because that is also changed. So here you see the 4.0.5 and uh, now it's waiting for the temperature to stabilize, uh, which is normal and it goes the same way for the 4.1.0. And um, yeah, the nice fun bit happens uh, when you compare what uh, the two behaviors of the previous version and the new version, which are quite different as you will see in a second. Now you will see a side-by-side -side comparison of the two firmwares and the behaviors again with my trusty cogwheel. And you see immediately that there's quite a difference and that the 4.1.0 finishes much earlier than the previous one. It's quite a change in the behavior of the handling of this, so let's give this a second look. So I have uh, slowed down the movie and uh, let's see what happens and comment it a bit in real time. So the first thing that the new firmware does is that it extrudes a bit while the previous firmware was actually preparing for the ramming and was actually retracting for a bit. So the new firmware just uh, extrudes a bit and then retracts while the other one retracts, then extrudes and then retracts slowly, then a bit faster, and slowly again. So according to Prusa, this is a change that makes uh, the process better. Overall, I keep on being satisfied with the Prusa Mini. I'm coming from uh, an Ender 3, as you can see behind me, which is quite uh, customized, and uh, it's not so straightforward to do all the updates, and uh, if you're uh, into changing uh, or keeping updated your firmware, that could be uh, a bit uh, complicated. I have uh, videos on uh, on that changes as well. Uh, you can, of course, much more customize this with Marlin. It's much easier to go through it. But still, it's a long process and you, know, you need to know what you're doing. In this case, with the Prusa Mini, that's targeted, obviously, to a different kind of audience. Uh, and you don't have to spend so much time. You just grab the firmware, slam it on the USB stick, put it, the USB stick in the machine and you're good to go. So overall, I think uh, they're making a very good uh, work with these machines and I like the new features of the firmware. I've not tested it yet, so I don't know if there's anything weird that can come up, but so far I'm uh, convinced it's going to be a success. 
that's that's it for today so as i said in the intro of the video i'm looking for the 1000 subscribers mark so that's going to be a milestone for me so if you're if you're new to the channel consider subscribing that will that will mean a lot to me and uh, that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video and until next time